This is a neat thing. It's a uh, magnifying glass with a light built into it. I bought it from JCAR, it was on special. I now know why it's on special after having it for a little while. It has a dodgy power button. Um, it's also something uh, rattling around in there. Actually, the rattling around thing is my fault. I did drop it on the ground. Um, but the power button is the real problem because it just keeps turning itself on and off. Like I'm not, um, I'm just touching that power button. And the thing turns itself off intermittently uh, when you're using it. Which is a shame because it's really quite good and I'm a big fan of of uh, these things. Um, okay. And um, I'd like to fix this if possible. So I'm going to try and pull this apart and see if I can't get to the power button and fix it. Uh, having a quick look at it, it looks to me, I don't know if you can see the gap there, it looks to me as though it's just clipped together. Um, but that usually means that they're not designed to come apart very easily. But we'll give it a go. I don't really mind if I destroy it because it's so annoying with the the power intermittently going off that, uh, yeah, I really, really want to either fix or I don't want to use it, if that's the choices that I have. Right, so... Take these batteries out. The Fly Deer batteries. Oops, there's a bit of plastic. Like I said, the broken plastic is my fault because I did drop the whole thing on the ground. Um, yeah, and I can see a bit of a, a split here. Can I zoom in on this? You can see that a little bit of a split just here. That's definitely caused by me. But the real question is, can I get it to separate? Let's see if I can use a spudger. Do some exploratory um, Yeah, so there's a big gap there. It's definitely just clipped together. One of the advantages about playing the guitar is you always have plenty of these plectrums. And they can come in mighty useful. Come on! another tact. So down in this area down in here. I think this spudger is just it's not up to the job. Can't apply any real force.
What else could we use? I've got a little bit of a screwdriver here. Okay. And that's applying a lot of force. It's also biting into it. To the plastic. I don't really care cosmetically. Oh. There's a big click. Click. Looks like we're getting somewhere. So I wonder if I can use the spudger now. really doesn't have the uh, really doesn't have the power the old spudger I have to get myself a better one I believe you can get maybe I'll do I have a wider would this be any better? I don't think so Is coming. Oops, I'm losing all sorts of bits. That was a good one. Ta da! There we go. So, yeah, a little bit of damage to it, but um, not too much. Okay, so where do those things go? Little plastic lenses go over there. All right, and uh, that'll be the button switch. So, what is the problem with this button? Yeah, so the switch just doesn't have good contact, like the... Turn that light off. So, just the slightest movement on there will actually cause the, uh, the light to flicker and to, to come on. So I'm just barely touching that. Which is weird, isn't it? Because such a, uh, a large mechanical movement with the button well I mean if I had another button that would fit in there I don't think that I do. Um, that's, I mean, that's a very large button. I wonder if it would be physically possible to pull that apart. If I were to desolder that. Yeah, it actually looks... You see that? So there's a plastic housing and it's all loose there. It's like like this button has been clipped together. So why don't I desolder it and see if I can't um, 
get to the inside of this button and see if there's nothing that I can't do. Let me crank up the soldering iron. Oh no, we're shorting it out. There may be an explosion. And there we go. Safe now. Get that out of the way. All right, so, yeah, interesting. So, it's a tactile button. It's got a really good tactile feel to it but it's just something not quite right so once again if we could sort of open this up I don't know whether that's even possible I've never tried to open a switch before Best tool for the job. What, what could we use? Oh, maybe we'll just stick this in here. Okay. Oh. So yeah. What do we got in here? Something go ping? Well, it's all come apart. <laughs> Let me just kind of focus that. So we've got the outer housing there. We've got the actual... That's the button. And there's another inner thing, I think, that pushes down onto here. And that has got a spring. And uh, it's that this bit here that must Let me get this back into focus where are I? yeah so these are the two terminals that must must bridge when you with that disc okay with so many moving parts unnecessary in my opinion and it's got those if I can turn it on the side you can see that it's got these met sort of triangular teeth cut into it and I'm guessing that those teeth So this is the bit that goes inside it. And that. So they must mesh together so that when you push it in and pull it out, when you push it in and pull it out, those teeth are, um, are cut in such a way that it twists this thing around and it twists it one way it's out a little bit more and then when you do it again it turns it around again that's what I'm thinking like it just keeps twisting around and at some point it will fall into the teeth and it will and it'll rise above the teeth and fall back in the teeth it's a great theory yeah oh yeah okay I don't know if you can see that, but as I twist it around, it sits on top of the teeth. And if you twist it around a little bit further, it drops back into the next set of teeth. And I'm guessing that the teeth are cut at such an angle that um, that it wants to spin around 
you know, as you as you press down on it, it sort of twists the whole thing around. Damn clever, but probably if something that's been around, it's probably the way that every one of these switches works. And that's the way they've worked for you know, 50 years or something like that. Just some clever guy figured it out. All right. So, let's see what happens if we put this thing back together. Now we understand how it works. So the problem is that these terminals um, are coming into contact when they shouldn't be. What I might do is that that one looks a little bit bent. I might get a pair of pliers. Maybe I can just use these and try and try and straighten this just ever so slightly. It's got a little bit of a bow in it. I'll just apply a little bit of pressure. See if they can't straighten it out. Has it done anything? Not really. Oh, well, we'll put it back together and just give it another go because sometimes just the act of pulling it apart, putting it back together, although not, not strictly scientific, can really can fix the problem. So we get that back in yes and we've got our little um, <clears throat> contact That contact's going to push all the way down. Okay, that didn't work. It's the same as before, so there's no there's no clicking action happening. So that depends on how those gears are meshed together. Just trying to get this apart without it pinging off. I'm going to have to pull it all apart again. And it's just a matter of getting this gear these teeth meshed in. I've got no way of knowing what's the proper proper way. Oh, come on. Okay, so I've turned that around and now it's fully down. So really just guessing at this stage that that's the right, the right way. All I can do is Put it back together and try it. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I pull apart again. Okay. Oh, it's so fiddly. If I lose that spring, I'm gone. Alright, clicked it back. 
back together. So have we got mechanically, oh yeah, so now it's mechanically working. And these terminals are working, but whether or not that's any better than it was, I don't know. New problemo, let's uh, solder it back into the circuit and see what happens. Just um, get that out of the way. So this has got to sit in here. What am I doing? Wait, how does that fit in? I mean, it's got to be pressed by that. So does it just sit in like that? Yeah, that's exactly how it works. Okay. Right. And then this bit here. Let's just solder this back on as best we can and uh, just see what happens. Well, I think a little bit more fresh solder is required. Just just get a bit of fresh solder onto there. Oh, it's a tricky job. That's okay, I just, uh, just want to test it. I don't want to, uh, it's not a permanent solver. Come on. Come on. physically soldered back in. Let's get this. Put this switch back in there. Guess we've got to hold it down. It wants to jump out. Good. Oh, it looks like my videos become all stroppy again. So at 
that looks so much better. So obviously, yeah, this is a very narrow clearance tolerance inside that switch and just basically putting it back together has fixed it. Cool. All right. I'll just fix up these solder joints, put everything back together, get rid of these. tricky bit because it's missing its lugs here. I think there's still enough clips left. Oh no, don't forget that. damage where I opened it but really nothing significant so let's just make sure it still works oh, what have I done why doesn't that go in click okay still needs to be clicked in We've got our uh, fly deers. Nothing like a good old fly deer battery. So there's a bit of broken plastic just floating around inside. That's fine, I don't care. So, let's see. I keep pressing this, it doesn't flicker, turn it on, turn it off, seems stable, call that a win, yeah, good enough for me, nice little mental health exercise there, alright, ciao.